Dan Perry here with another Dan on Tech video. What is cloud computing? Well, we hear a lot of things about cloud computing. It's up in the cloud. Well, just what is it? Well, let's go backwards a little bit and talk about the old days of computers back in the 70s and 80s. And there we had these large computers called mainframes. And they could cost millions of dollars. And a lot of small companies could not afford to buy a mainframe computer. So what those companies would do <clears throat> is they would rent or So here's my mainframe computer. <clears throat> Here would be my user. And there would be a dedicated connected line to that mainframe computer. It could be, or I guess it could be a dial-up, but normally it was a dedicated line. Now when I say the user here, this would be more likely to be their company. So it would probably be your company. And you may have many users. But this mainframe computer would be off somewhere else and you would use the computer and you would pay for your storage and you would pay for your usage <clears throat> and you'd get a bill at the end of the month whenever you were running jobs or running programs it would run back here on the mainframe and then the results would come to a computer screen or a printer within your company well, that was mainframe computing. Uh, done a lot, often called things like time sharing. Well, today we hear about cloud computing. It's in the cloud. Well, what do we mean? Well, when we we'll see a picture, some you know that's supposed to represent a cloud, <clears throat> and we'll see a user's computer, and an internet connection to the cloud and somewhere up in the cloud you're storing, storing files or you're running or using a computer <clears throat> and that's how that are not located at your company. Now the big difference now is we're using the internet to access those systems. Instead of having to pay for an always-on dedicated line to that computer, now we're paying for an internet connection and we're connecting to that facility through the internet. <clears throat> now some of the things with storage, or rather with cloud computing. One is storage. we want to store files and there are some storing companies that do that some are free some are charged and and a lot of them they have a free tier where you can get a certain amount of storage for free and then you pay beyond that <coughs> excuse me <coughs> companies like Dropbox Microsoft has their OneDrive. Google has their Drive product, Google Drive. These are examples of some of this online storage and depending their different levels I have five gigabytes of free storage in Dropbox. I have some OneDrive free storage. I have, I think it's 15 gigabytes of free storage on Google. 
If I want more, I can pay for it. I also have storage from some other companies. For example, I have some storage from Amazon. And there's some free. Also, there are some paid storage. And all of these companies offer paid storage where you pay a monthly or an annual fee for certain amounts of storage. What's happening now is that those files are stored up in this cloud instead of on your computer and that way you can access them from any, anywhere. If, as long as I've got an internet connection, I can get to my Dropbox or OneDrive. And it doesn't matter what computer I'm on. So, or if I go over to a friend's house and need to access something, I can do that through the storage. The lesser talked about or lesser known features of cloud computing is remote or a computing platform. And there are a number of companies that provide that. I'm going to talk about Microsoft and Amazon. Microsoft has something called Azure. I think I'm spelling that right. A-Z-U-R-E. Amazon has AWS or Amazon Web Services. <clears throat> In both cases, I can use services. I can, with both of those, I can have virtual machines or remote machines that are installed. They're running when I have them turned on on their services. I can access them re remotely. If I've got a web server or something like that running on them, other people can access them. And I only pay for what I use. And I've got choices of how big those machines are. Not only how much RAM, how many processors, but how much storage they have <clears throat> or how they access that storage. Both again have a free you get charged. So use that free tier for testing to see if it's something you want to do. That I could, for example, create an email server uh, or I could have a web server a database server. In fact, one of the things some people will use these services for, they have the ability to really rapidly do processing of data in large databases. If you need to do statistical work, statistical functions, do, do analysis, because they can throw actually hundreds of machines on the job. And so I could upload this data to their services and I can use it to get the analysis without having to go out and buy hundreds of machines or wait weeks for this analysis to be done. Uh, other services they actually have that are really separate from running your own computer or your own instance that's dedicated to you is some of them do provide email services. If you use Gmail with Google, that G Google Gmail service, they're providing an email service and they offer that to businesses as well, as well as individuals. Microsoft does the same thing with Microsoft Exchange Server. So I don't want to have to go out, buy all the hardware, pay for ex uh, licensing of Exchange Server, ain't it, so I can contract with Microsoft for my email services and they will run that for me and I don't have to dedicate staff. Again, that's a monthly fee, but that fee in general will be much less than hiring a staff person just to do that. Well, does that mean I should always move everything to the cloud? No. 
There's a number of things such as security that may affect whether you want to do that. If you have, a, have the staff, you may want to let your staff manage as well. So it may be that, no, you're not hiring one person just to do email, but this is part of the functions that that staff person does, so it wouldn't be a significant additional cost. Well, that's a very quick, down and dirty overview of what cloud computing is. Thank you for watching this Dan on Tech video. Please subscribe to this playlist so you don't miss future videos.